I've sunk an enemy destroyer. This is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really fun ranked game video that uh, really shows off the power of the USS Sims. And uh, man, this thing is a beast uh, for what it does. But before we get a like, subscribe bell button below. Appreciate all the supporters of the channel. And uh, we're going to get right to it about uh, what The Sims is. The Sims is a tier 7, and lately it's been uh, tier 6, tier 7 for the initial uh, new round of ranked sprint. Or, yeah, more competitive, competitive style where you have this small, you know, 6 versus 6 kind of grouping battles here where we're just, you know, playing low tier ships to get yourself up to that gold or sorry brawn silvers and then gold so if you guys don't know what it is look it up it's basically just competitive and any kind of you know kind of player versus player mode and and uh, I, I enjoy it it's kind of like clan battles except without communication and i've always said communication is important but really the video is about the uh uss sims and how to be a good destroyer player so we're going to combine all that in like my videos always do if you're new here to the channel that's what we like to do we focus on destroyer gameplay i'm a dd main and i do enjoy it a lot it really is the most impactful uh aspect of the game that i find that's uh, really fun and uh like i said if it's impactful it's enjoyable because it requires you to think it requires you to get a little bit better it requires you to practice it requires communication it requires leadership it requires tactics it requires, it requires strategy and that is i think a lot of it um uh, is lacking these days and i especially in the world of warships games and i that's why i enjoy this game uh, a lot because one it's uh, very therapeutic it's uh, shooting and watching, uh, you know, shooting guns, artillery guns onto ships and seeing uh, points tick up is uh, pretty therapeutic for some reason. I don't know why. And then, of course, uh, the, the gameplay uh, strategy, it's not the run and gun shoot with your head cut off kind of Call of Duty style, but it's really the the tactics, the enjoyable, the, uh, the enjoyable uh, aspect of actually using strategy, actually communicating, actually coordinating and and really just slow gameplay. It's not like, again, run and gun, just hold the, the, the mouse button down and just watch your. Uh, full automatic unload the clip. Uh, but like I said, this is really fun, enjoyable with the Sims. Now, I don't like tier 6 and 7. I like playing tier 10 more and even tier 9, but this is what we have to do uh, for the beginning rounds of uh, ranked gameplay. You got to start off with bronze, and right off the bat, we're spotted. Now, this is why I enjoy about the destroyer gameplay role. You're the first one out, first one spotted normally, and you're taking the fight to the enemy. Now, right off the bat, we're going to go ahead and shoot the, our counterpart here, uh, if, uh, the USS Mahan, Mahan, if you pronounce it. It's along the tech tree line of the destroyer uh, role. This is my counterpart right here. And the reason why I don't like the Mahan too much is because the guns are kind of crappy. It is kind of that Fletcher-style design. Unfortunately, the reload's so horrendously long, and the torpedoes only go out to, a, like, a, a very short range. I can't think of off the top of my head. I know it's about really, really low, maybe 6.5, 7-ish. But if you notice, the Sims torpedo range is out to 10.5. So I like that aspect. I can go reach out and touch somebody. We start a fire right there, right off the bat. So the guns of the Sims are, again, it's kind of like Fletcher-style guns, the ones you see in the movie, the Greyhound with Tom Hanks and everything. Pretty awesome. Oh, we get a torpedo hit. You see why torpedoes are so good in this? Because the range it goes out. Oh, and boom, look at that. Splash one. We got flooding. So many, many ways for a destroyer player to kill the enemy. The first thing I've always said is to eliminate the other destroyer player. When you do that, you literally take the cake because most likely if you take out their destroyer player, you take out their eyes and ears, their leadership and so forth, their front spotting, and you pretty much increase the probability of your chances of winning. I'm not going to say all the time, but majority of the time. And uh, like I said, that's... That's the nature of the game today. So let's get, uh, like, right off the bat, I mean, that alone right there 
really what helped your team out greatly and cruises the morale because when the other team sees, oh man, they took out their store, now the battleships and cruisers can stop being, you know, poo nannies and sit in the back and actually move forward and give, um, you know, that uh, that umph to get yourself to push. Now this enemy team, the the George and Sean Horse, I have to compliment you guys. You guys are actually moving forward together as one unit, cohesive unit, and actually pushing as opposed to my team. They just like to sit in the back. So I applaud you for that. That's great. Unfortunately, World of Warships doesn't reward this because most of the time when people push like this without destroyer gameplay, it, it's too dependent upon that destroyer or one class of ships that it just throws the game off and it doesn't make it very enjoyable. They either the battleships will either get burned down, focus down, have no spotting, get torpedo down, get carrier down, get uh, to, uh, submarine down, everything down for the battleship. The battleship player is literally the weakest link nowadays, and it seems like in World of Warships because they can't really survive much now i'll do another video of i think battleships are going obsolete and i and that proof to that is because they just released that new um uh pan uh a, it's a pan american uh battleship called libertard uh libertard i don't know how to pronounce that <laughs> but that that alone tells you that the battleships are suffering because they have to release that monstrosity and i wish i could get it to review it but just watching the videos that thing is a monstrosity that can actually push i mean you have the longest range secondaries that i've seen in a game with the f funny button key and you also have the great pen great reload great everything and the armor is amazing right and the the secondary is pen 51 millimeters which is really above the threshold which everybody would like to have secondaries do and like i said because they released that i believe that is the reason why battleships are dying they have to release something to bring the battleship player back on or you're just going to be left with this so right now we're engaging the colorado why do i why would i engage the Colorado as a little teeny destroyer one i know i can win this engagement you only pick fights that you know you're going to win. Don't You don't ever pick a fair fight, and you want to go in and do whatever you can. Now, the, rig the biggest hurdle, I would say, for Battleship players is um, that they have fires. And look at that. We're starting fires all over the destroyer. That's the only way I can beat a Battleship, really. It, boom, right there, splash two. Just setting a bunch, a bunch of fires. Because my little puny uh, pea shooters really aren't going to be able to penetrate a majority of the armor except for his superstructure. And as a good destroyer player, you want to shoot the superstructure as much as possible to get not only alpha damage, but you also want to start a many, many fires. And that is what's going to allow you to just continuously... Uh, just melt and burn down battleships with that re reducing the amount of risk to your ship as well. So again, Sean Horse right here, great secondary brawler right here. I like the Sean Horse a lot. Unfortunately, when it comes to uh, playing up against destroyer, it's difficult because it doesn't have any kind of de defensive capabilities outside of just secondary sheer firepower. And I can just sit back from concealment or smoke, and I can either farm him to death or use torpedoes like you see right here. So that's the thing I like about the Sims. Now, the Sims, I believe, is a premium ship. You can uh, go look for it in the armory. I don't know the top of my head what it costs, but it's available for a majority of everybody who plays this game. So I encourage it. There's another fire right there. Look, I'm just aiming at the superstructure. Now, all he has is to defend against really is the secondaries. Now, as a good uh, player right there, Splash 3, um, as a good destroyer player, you can throw, throw off the shells by because they're automatically aimed by the computer. You just basically turn left, turn right, slow down, change your vector, and then you can win it that way. So, again, why do I like the Sims so much compared to the Tech Tree line? I like it because, one, yeah, I get it pay to play. It, it is a lot better uh, in this tier for me. And I've noticed, man, when I play the Sims, I win so many more battles because why? It's such a small destroyer. It's nimble, it's quick, it's maneuverable, it's got the, the torpedoes that go out to 10.5 kilometers, which is really a lot of good. For against the uh, other Tech Tree American line. It's got the long American duration smoke. It's got engine boost. You can see I'm getting up to 42 knots at tier 7, which is incredible. I um, Now, the concealment's terrible. I have 6.6 .6 concealment. There are definitely other destroyers and other players out there that outspot me. So I agree that the Sims is not the, the best in concealment, but man, this thing is powerful. It is a crazy, crazy uh, amazing destroyer for that but again the concealment is the one that's lacking but of course you have the smoke as well now you're going to see the power right here i'm so thin that literally it's so difficult for non-secondary uh, battleships to attack me it's difficult to aim with the big caliber guns and the battleships are downside here because the gun swings so uh it takes so long for it to swing around a church reverse 180 degrees and really there's no way to defend against it and you just got to suffer the fact that you're a big 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 hunk of junk and right here is a definition of why, man, you can just torpedo rush a tier six and seven, and boom, he goes down. Look at that, four kills. Killing the majority of the team right there, leaving 
nobody left for my team to play with. But man, that is powerful. Let's take another look at another aspect of the Sims that I, I like. It has decent aim. Man, I shot down so many airplanes in the next game, but I don't like carriers, man. And then I'll, that video will explain exactly why. But there, look at the damage battle assessment right here. Uh, man, 60, not much damage. 63,000 torpedo hits. Great. Fires started. See, this is exactly why you want to play a destroyer player because you do so many aspects of damage, right? You have guns. You have torpedoes. You have fires, flooding. You're also going out there spotting and capturing, uh, uh, spotting ships and then capturing points. And that's how you win the game, uh, the objective base, that is. You get combat scout, devastating strike. You eliminate the short player, you're going to take out the entire team but just going one down the line, right? So that's uh, that's how we do it. Let's see, yeah, on top of the team, just detailed report. Yeah, there you go. There are the basics right there. Again, capturing points is the bigger one. So let's take a look at the next video, which actually explains why I hate carrier so much and i think it's detrimental to the game now i used to play carriers it was, it was fun when it first came out now it's not so much so well let's go in the next video and take a look at it and see why all right so here's the sims uh kind of demonstration of the aa abilities right here and i'll just show how ridiculous this is it's actually the one of the top five and um for tier six and tier seven rank for destroyers so uh, very, very awesome. It, 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 I mean, it does what it does. I mean, it doesn't have the defensive AA, which I did, but it has a nice flak burst, has continuous AA damage. It doesn't have medium range, according to the statistics. So let's take a look at what the carrier does to us, and I'll show you, just demonstrate. If you're, you're thinking about it, hey, well, how's the AA on this thing? Yeah, it's okay. So I did go right off the bat. I'm capping. I'm also capping Charlie Point and blowing up battleships and whatnot. Yeah, things we're supposed to do, right? So let me take a look. Let me speed it up. So yeah, yeah, we shoot the battleship. Now watch the carriers coming at us for now. We turn our AA on in smoke, and we're just blasting. Look at the A at the top right screen there. We're blasting everybody right there, just constantly going up. We're just constantly shooting. I don't know what else to do other than sit in smoke and just survive. And yeah, yeah, let's see here. Speed it up a little bit here. Just look at the AA on this thing. It's incredible. Yeah, we're going to blow up the battleship. He gets mad at us because we're doing some more effective damage to him. He has no hydro. Yep, we're shooting AA again. Still shooting the AA. Still taking up. We're up to 12,000. And boom, there he goes down. Okay, now look, we're going to get attacked by the AA, the aircraft carrier constantly here. So, look, sir, we're perma spotted now because he's flying over us. Yep, what can you do? Yep, it's got to run away. Just dodge, right? And he is in low altitude. Yeah, 85 uh, tick. We do 85 damage to an airplane. Wow. All right, hopefully we blow up another plane. Yep, we got another plane. So we're up to 11 airplanes damage right there. Or shot down. Okay, now he is, now the carrier's out with a vengeance now. He has literally just come at us. Look at the AA, how it does right here. Let's see here. Wait, I'm, I just wait till he literally gets almost right on top of me, and there's nothing you can do at this point other than just shoot him as he goes, uh, flies around. We'll focus on the uh, airplanes here. Yep, AA guns are on. Yay, 90 damage out of time. It has two flat clouds. You can see the little puffs of smoke. Those, those are doing something, right? They're supposed to cause damage, but unfortunately, he's dodging them. So, All right, there's a nice little shot. He comes, flies right over us. Okay, go slim profile, and yay. Hopefully, we missed. He took a little bit. He took one little rocket, took 726 damage off us. We take 85 off of one of his uh, airplanes. Wow. Totally fair, right? Where's he at now? Okay, he is up in the air. So let's speed it up a little bit. Here comes more torpedo planes. So there it is. He's now attacked. We turn our AA on at the last minute right there. I mean, this thing can hold a little bit there. I mean, even even 45 over long periods of time does something. But man, this this, this sucks. Okay, he can just keep dodging and weaving and avoiding my shells while I can only dodge so much. Now, good, thankfully, his torpedoes are not as good as, uh, I would say, Hakuru's. But let's see right here. He's coming back around. Okay, I had to slow down there to dodge, but he can keep full throttle speed as an airplane always does. Look at that. Shooting down more and more planes. Holy crap. Now, yep, man, he gets a nice torpedo. We're going to have to probably eat one of these things. Holy crap. Did we eat one? Oh, man, we dodged that one. Ready to go. Here he comes again. Yeah, we're going to just shoot the uh, carrier as best we can while we're shooting down airplanes galore here. Up to 28,000 damage on airplanes. I would have destroyed almost two destroyers right there. Now we're totally in his uh, Class B airspace here, where we're just gonna uh, just shoot down every single plane that takes off from the airport, the mobile airport. Yep, there it is. I'm just showing you all the damage we're doing. Look at the damage, constant damage, constant damage to airplanes. We have air, we have literally an aerodrome all over us. We got planes there. We got planes there. They're all over the place. Planes landing. We're shooting at planes landing. Planes taking off. 
totally hilarious, right? This is exactly what I'm demonstrating right here. You just dodge, right? Yep, we're up. We hit the 40,000. Yep, 40,000 air plea damage mark. And he gets a nice drop on us. Nothing I can do about this one. I'm going to have to eat it. Oh, man. He took he took almost a couple thousand right there off of us. Torpedoes are too slow to attack him. He's running away. That's all he can do. He can run away. I can't because I have to do every objective possible here. So we're getting shot. Torpedoes there. We got planes there coming on our right side. Starboard. We got planes to landing. We're going to shoot down the planes that are landing. We're going to shoot down planes that are taking off. We have the uh, fighter escorts as well. It's literally the entire airfield over us right now. All right, he's coming back for more. We're shooting down low. He, he has unlimited um, ordnance to be shooting that he can guide. Unlimited drones, unlimited uh, guided weapon systems here. And I have pea shooters. All right, there we go. Still shooting airplanes landing. But don't worry, he has more airplanes taking off. Don't worry, we have fresh supply of airplanes. We're at 51,000 damage right here. 36 airplanes. Holy crap. He's still coming back down. He's up. There's the bomb drop. Okay, just dodge. And he still takes damage on us right there. We're just going to keep shooting at this guy. Oh, meanwhile, he is still attacking us. Where are the airplanes at? They're overhead. Holy crap here. All right, we got airplanes behind us as well. We got more airplanes coming up. Oh, he's not another drop right there. Is he going to get us? They're coming down. They're coming down. And boom, we take out the carrier. And their carrier goes down, but we we're still taking airplanes. We're still killing airplanes up to, come on, can we get 60,000 damage on the airplanes now? Come on, stay in our flak bubble. Come on, baby, get to 60. Come on, almost there. Oh, we barely made... We only got 59,946. That's ridiculous. Oh, we could have set a record for us in The Sims right there. 59,000 damage. I mean, that's as much as the battleship right there. He has 59,400. We did 59,900. We did that much damage in airplanes. All right, anyways, I want to show you what happened there. I thought I was going to win this game, right? <laughs> You'd be wrong. This is the game of throws right here. Uh, not my fault. I mean, all I did was go cap and do everything I could. Watch. I'll speed it up as fast as I can. We go cap Bravo. We do our job, right? We cap. Hopefully we cap, but they, guess what? They got a submarine. Our carrier can only do so much. My torpedoes, he was dodging really good. Good job there on the battleship player. Uh, let's see here. And we don't make it. Look at that. We lose by points. We were at 990. Carrier dies, and then we lose on points. So <laughs> isn't that funny? We'll, we'll take it to the next game. But yeah, defeat right there. 43,000. We did literally 59,000. 946 damage and uh we still can't win on airplanes that uh, we, we destroyed an amount uh similar to that of a battleship but uh let's get to the next video i'm tired of carriers all right so here's another game uh for you it is on the map big race in domination mode and of course this displays the power of the sims again why i think it's a very good contender for what it being one of the best destroyers of tier seven uh, for the current ranked gameplay. Now, uh, the downside of The Sims is that it doesn't has one less gun than the Mahon, its counterpart in the tech tree. However, the rate of reload and the amount of firepower it can bring down to bear is pretty darn incredible. I think it can deal one-on-one -on -one engagements pretty uh, effectively. The shells are a little floaty. They're not as fast as I would like them to be. They're only 792 meters per second. Wish it would come out of the barrel a little faster, a little um, sloppier traje trajectory, a little lower. That way it gets a little bit better at aiming. Again, these are the American shells are more de designed to be shot and lofted over it seems like majority of the time uh islands and and cover so that that's i think that's the downside of the american line which was a little bit uh, lower trajectory like kind of like the sherman kind of standpoint of guns those are very very accurate very fun okay we're going against carry in this one now just to pay attention uh to the amount of firepower we bring to bear but the, the downside of the guns i hate carriers especially in ranked i think it doesn't bring any kind of uh mystique or strategy to the game it pretty much is just fly over the area find your guys kind of like what drone warfare nowadays in the war in today's modern warfare you can see in the ukraine and russian conflict both sides are using drone warfare and it's kind of like that Hey, technology is advancing to the point where it's just uh, now it's it's sheer who can have the best technology to win. And there really is not much strategy to it. Like drone goes up, goes spots, goes attacks, boom, done. Kind of like the same as these airplanes. They're like drones, right? They go up. They have the, the higher ground. I mean, basically, you are attacking the high ground. And if you can ha have the high ground, you can see everything. And you just pinpoint and go and shoot just like satellites. I'm in the Air Force, so I know that. And when you take the high ground, which is space nowadays, you can see every enemy movement. There is no there's no mystery nowadays. And again, I have to say there's a lot of classified technology out there. But again, you can see 
um, everything on the earth and that you it reveals the entire battlefield map to you just like you're playing a simulation or a game and once you see it that one slightest movement boom you can attack it right away from the sky mind you and then enemy can't do much can't maneuver especially as a ship like look right here ship can only move maneuver so much while drones and airplanes uh, can really just attack from the sky and have every 306 degrees of attack aspect and really you can't do much and like this this destroyer right here here's a there's a lesson right there you can see right there always pay attention to where your surroundings are at because if you run into an island boom you are sol because now you can't maneuver and you have to reverse which takes time and then you got to change direction and move forward again which takes time and as a good destroyer player you have to maintain the situational awareness of your surroundings that's why i blow up the mini map so big that's why i use the right mouse button to do free look so i can take a look so i'll, help, I'll hold free right mouse button now and i can take a look look around it doesn't move my guns it keeps them pointed in the, the continuously direction of the threat and that's how I, uh, I attack and use the destroyer player role. RPF is a great aspect. I know where he's at around. He moved out of the smoke. Finally, you can see my RPF indicator is showing that he is to the 1 or 2 o'clock right now, which I, that's what I would do. I anticipate player movements. Yep, he went right to depth exactly where I predicted he would be. He's going to go out now. I'm going to go behind the smoke, which means nobody's spotting for me. He's going to go undetected. I would rather do that. Watch torpedoes, of course. I would rather do that because now I pushed him out of the cap. And what is my job as a destroyer player? I'm post to cap. Uh, the objectives and take those points to secure points for my team. Notice where my team's at. They're bubkis. They're dead. They're dead. They're in the back. He's in the back. Nobody's capping. So who is the only person doing the the job and the role of the destroyer or the, the whole objective of the game? Me. That's why I like being a destroyer player so much because I have so much influence and power to dictate how we're going to win this match. So right now we're going to launch within 10 and a half kilometer C. Torpedoes are at 10 and a half kilometer range right there. C 10 and a half. Good reload, by the way. 74 seconds, not bad. 49 knots, very slow, but still 7.6 second uh, reaction time launching those torpedoes out they do a decent amount of damage i like that so we're not going to miss with the battleship for or the destroyer for now let's see here 10 and a half range 9600 damage so it's pretty good for the torpedoes now what we're going to do what is our objective right here our objective is to burn as many fires on this sharn horse as much as possible there's one fire he doesn't have fire prevention as you can tell this back portion of his uh, ship is on fire which means this section in the front here can get set on fire now if the whole thing was on fire he has fire prevention most of the time i don't see um guys of this lower tier playing with that there there's a second fire right there. So superstructure damage. And we're going to keep shooting on the superstructure to get uh, more alpha damage. You can see I can't pin any of this area because the armor's too thick. Guns are too small. I'm also resetting the cap, which means I'm defending it, which is also a good thing. You get points for that. Ooh, destroyer player's finding a blind firing. So let's see here. We can start as many fires to take as much alpha damage as possible, as you can see we're doing right there. He's going to burn down right there. You notice, again, I could try to start a fire on his valve, but I can't aim. Ooh, this is bad. Good good on the destroyer player right there. Boom, I take a hit from the, the torpedo. Now I got to engage this guy because he's getting really annoying. So he's firing blind frame. He's revealing his position, and there he is. Okay, we have a health advantage right here, so we're going to go ahead and fire at him. I'm going to go ahead and lead him a little bit. You know, right here, I aim. I put the 16 and the 14. My sweet spot is 14. Start there, and then start walking the shells on him. We're going to start aiming at the main uh, section of his ship. He slows down, and boom, we actually take him out with only 1,690 to spare then that's the downside with the sims i don't have much health to play with and i have no heals so being a good gunboat dd main as i am is really difficult to play without the uh the the heals necessary to win the engagement so you got to be very very careful about your health manage manage it very well and uh you know just just pick your fights and choose them wisely okay right here like the other team only lost i killed the destroyer i also help uh, mitigate that sharn horse but thank goodness someone else killed him for me now all i have is nagato left i have to cap the spot now am i gonna run in here and w i thought this game was over i thought okay i better just kill myself and get this game over with but actually so the stress board there is very low on health now do i fire and risk revealing my position my smoke is still on cooldown i'm actually making an educated guess here he's low enough where man my other battleship can ta attack him I i'm looking at his guns they're not facing me he's not a secondary battleship so I'm kind of shooting from nice cover. This battleship over here is not aiming at me. So, again, educated guess. I'm going to go ahead and say, let's take this engagement, help my battleship player out, try to burn this guy down as much as possible. That's why I like the destroyer gameplay role so much, because your reload's way better than everybody else. And look, we're hitting torpedoes as well. We have so many aspects of the game that we can use to our, 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 uh, our to bear onto the enemy to kill the enemy player. And boom, there it is, splash two. We take on another battleship now, our turn to kill the Bayern as well. His secondaries can't see us through smoke. And of course, uh, as new players, you gotta make sure 
your your, your gut spotting before you shoot and smoke. Because if I'm the only guy spotting, nobody's going to help me. I can't see this guy to kill him. So right now, we're, he's got fire prevention in the middle of there. The whole middle section is on fire. So we're just going to keep shooting his metal. He's almost dead. 464. Come on. One more hit. And boom. Look at that. Splash three. We actually turned this game around. We actually could potentially win this thing. So now, Battleship player, can you help me out and take out this other Destroyer player? Uh, so that it makes my job a little easier because now all I have to do is cap these two points or take the carrier on and win the game. Why I like the short player so much, my the guns just reload faster. I mean, I can do more the guns, more consistent damage because the guns reload so quickly. As opposed to battleship players, their gun reloads around the 25 to 30 seconds. It takes forever for them to reload, which is an eternity to kill this guy. Look, he is he has relying on his secondaries, which are crap sometimes, to kill this destroyer player with only 6,000 health, and you have like a lot, a lot of health. But unfortunately, you're getting bombed and. Shout out the carrier. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. He gets torped right there by the... Who's going to kill him? The carrier? Holy crap. The carrier kills the bash up. Now I got to kill this guy with 200 health left. Now look how wonky the shells are. I have it's. I have no idea how to teach this other than walking the shells on. I mean, look, 16 to 20. I'm just putting the numbers there. I'm wondering now he's slowing down very hard, changing speed destroyer. So again, I'm just using sheer volume of great, greater reload speeds to kill this guy. Hopefully one shell, just a lucky shell. That's all I need. Meanwhile, I'm also juking left and right to make throw off his shots. I don't want to die either. And come on, baby. One more hit. Boom. There it is. Splash four. And now I got to take on the entire uh, TIE fighter, X-Wing fighter uh, of the uh, Surov here. And uh, yeah, you can tell how unfair advantage this is. So what is the carrier player risking at this point? He hasn't. He doesn't have to do much. He can win the game based on points, or he can just run away and let me do all the work. And he could win based on time. He can just spot me. He could blow me up from the air. Look how many airplanes he gets. He gets all this airplanes, uh, uh, firepower that I can't do much about other than my AA. My AA can also a being able to be damaged 100% here. Now look at my AA is just ticking constantly up. So the AA on the Sims is. It should be better, honestly. It's an American destroyer. I, I just don't know why it's not as good. But, hey, I'm doing the best I can here with what I got. And, of course, RPF is indicating the carrier is going to the north. Again, I have to chase him down while he can just keep sending waves and waves of drones attacking me uh, with, uh, on a, uh, with the autonomy. And uh, there's nothing more I can do about it other than my guns. My torpedoes won't reach out too uh, quickly enough to kill this guy fast in time. So, again, guns shoot faster than torpedoes. So I got to use everything I have to bear on this guy to get him out of the game as quick as possible. And, of course, the skip bombers. Boom, I'm dead. That's why I hate carriers so much because why? There's no engaging battle play here. Good game on you, carrier, for what you did. But, again, I hate carriers. I don't think they're a good addition to the game because the destroyer player literally had to go around and kill everybody to, look, four kills. Four kills, 82,000 damage. I literally had to go around and kill everybody in order to try to save the game. And all the carrier has to do is just fly a plane over me with... He can keep sending planes over and over again. I, I, I lose my AA. I can have damaged guns. I can be blown up. Uh, all my modules could be destroyed. I could lose all forms of defensive capabilities, but the carrier can keep sending airplanes because they regenerate over time. And they have an invulnerability period uh, while they're attacking. I think that's unfair. Well, I, I mean, uh, yes, do you want to pick an unfair battle in uh, battle? Of course. But uh, when it's so completely one-sided in this, where it's, it's almost like, hey, let's bring a cannon into a bow and arrow fight. Okay, it's, it just doesn't seem very logistical, correct? And um, yeah, that's my thought. I mean, but that was a great game, though. Don't you guys think? I mean, it was fun uh, just trying to get <laughs> as many kills to save the game, to carry the game. Unfortunately, it does not work. I'll leave the build of The Sims at the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoy it, and um, yeah, it's uh, pretty wild, but it's this is ranked gameplay today, and Tier 6 and Tier 7 with The Sims, and check it out if you haven't tried it out. I like The Sims. I definitely recommend it. It's very powerful. I've seen a lot of wins with this thing. Unfortunately, when it goes against carriers, <laughs> you can't win. As always, you see me out there, say hi, and like, subscribe button below. Appreciate all the support of the channel, and until next time, we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Cheers.